What are pitot-static instruments and how do I use them for safe IFR flight? In this video, I'm going to explain all that and we're also going to talk about pitot-static errors because if you're relying on an instrument that's giving you bad information, especially if you're flying in the weather, this could be a recipe for disaster. Welcome to Free Pilot Training, I'm Josh, and this is a very important lesson for the instrument pilot because two of these instruments are required anytime you go fly an aircraft at all, and one of them may be required if you operate commercially. And if something's required, then the FAA thinks it's important, and so should you. Today we're talking about these guys, the airspeed indicator, the vertical speed indicator, and the altimeter. Now, we've already talked about the altimeter quite a bit in the previous lessons, but we need to talk about what causes it and these other instruments to work so you'll know when there's something wrong. You don't want to rely on something that might kill you. So, let's get started by taking a look at how these instruments work. Hopefully you already know this by now, but if you don't, our three pitot-static instruments are the airspeed indicator, the vertical speed indicator, and the altimeter. Now, I really don't understand why we call all of these pitot-static instruments. Only one of these is truly a pitot-static instrument, and that's the airspeed indicator. But all of these are connected to the static port, and most of the time, they're going to be connected to this primary static port. The alternate static is going to be used when the pucker factor is really high. I'll discuss that more in a minute. Pucker factor? I wonder what's puckered. When the time comes, you'll know. Anyway, all of these instruments are connected to the static port through tubing. I've been told that this is plastic, but I actually have no idea. I've never dissected an airplane to see what kind of plumbing they use in there. Now, the static port serves a very important purpose. This port is designed to sense the ambient air pressure around the outside of the aircraft. And this just means that we want it to gather the air pressure without being affected by the airflow from the movement of the aircraft. This is why they typically put these on the side of the aircraft where the relative wind doesn't affect it too much. The static port can then sense the air pressure and send it to these gauges through the tubing that we just talked about. Because the air is relatively undisturbed over here because it's out of the slipstream and away from the ram air. Now, the alternate static is also placed in a location where the air is relatively undisturbed. Most of the time, this guy is in the cockpit of the aircraft. I'll explain why we don't use the alternate static as the primary source in just a minute. But for now, just know that both of these static ports connect to all three of these instruments through tubing in the aircraft. And this is what allows all of these instruments to work. Now, when static air is supplied to the altimeter, this instrument is calibrated to compare the difference in this static air with what you have set in the Colesman window. The altimeter then gives you a height above this pressure setting based on these two items. In this example, our altimeter is sensing the difference in the air pressure that it's taking in at the static port and an altimeter setting of 29.90. And if that is in fact the air pressure at sea level here today, that difference is 4,000 feet. So our altitude is 4,000 feet above sea level. The vertical speed indicator, or the VSI, is an interesting device. This guy is basically a gauge with a hole in it. A very special hole. And the instrument flying handbook actually refers to this hole as a calibrated orifice, which makes me chuckle for no apparent reason. <laughs> And it's designed so that air can flow in and out of it so it can measure the rate at which the air pressure is changing. When you climb, air pressure rushes out to compensate for lower air pressure. When this happens, the vertical speed indicator can give you an approximate climb rate because the air thickness drops one inch of mercury every thousand feet. And when you descend, air rushes back in based on how quickly you're descending. This in turn allows you to see how many feet per minute you're descending. Now the airspeed indicator is also connected to the static port, but this guy is also connected to the pitot tube in addition to the static port. That's why I personally think that this is technically our only true pitot static instrument. But anyway, this allows the airspeed indicator to collect ram air from the relative movement of the aircraft. And when your airplane moves forward through the air, the ram air that comes into the pitot tube has a higher air pressure than the ambient air that's measured at the static port. And as you fly faster, the pressure from the ram air is higher. The cool thing about this is that the airspeed indicator then reads this difference and gives you an indicated airspeed based on this pressure difference. 
Probably the coolest part about this is that this design protects us when we fly at high density altitude locations like Colorado. If we were to fly based on true airspeed, we would need to adjust our airspeeds to protect us from stalling during takeoffs, landings, and other slow airspeed maneuvering. But because the airspeed indicator compares pressure and gives us a pressure airspeed instead of true airspeed, this keeps us from having to worry quite as much about high altitudes. High altitude still affects performance, but the airspeed indicator allows us to see how our airplane is performing. Okay, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about how to check these instruments on the ground. That way we know they're working properly. First things first, we've got the altimeter. And if you're sitting on the ground, this guy should not be moving up and down. And the altitude you're reading on here should be within 75 feet of a known field elevation. Now, here's something kind of weird. The VSI can actually be off a little bit. Which makes sense, because this guy is not even really required for IFR flights under part 91. If you check it and it reads 100 feet up or 150 feet down, all you need to do is take note of that and remember that in flight. And that number will be zero when you go fly. Then the airspeed indicator should read zero and that should not move until you start rolling down the runway. This is why a lot of people check it as they're doing the takeoff roll. Now, another thing that I like to check is the alternate static system, if the airplane has one. And all you have to do to check this is to pull the knob into the open or the on position. And when you turn on the alternate static, the VSI should jump up slightly for a second and then go back to the zero position. The altimeter and the airspeed indicator should both go up slightly and just kind of stay there. But it's okay if you don't really see these chains too much on the ground. And I'll explain why that is in just a minute. But the big thing is the VSI. This guy should jump up a little bit and go back down to zero. And after it does that, you can switch back to the primary static system as long as it's working properly. Now let's talk about some of the errors you can get in these systems. And one of the biggest causes for errors on the pedostatic system is ice buildup. And ice buildup is a major pucker factor in any aircraft that you fly. First things first, let's talk about the pitot tube. What do you think would happen if ice built up and kept the pitot tube from getting ram air? Which instrument do you think would be affected? Let me give you a hint, it's neither one of these. Only the airspeed indicator would be affected because it compares ram air to the static air to give us a pressure corrected airspeed. Now, you may have never noticed this before, but back here at the back of the pitot tube, there's a tiny little drain hole. And this guy just lets water escape if moisture somehow makes its way into the pitot tube. And this drain hole is important to remember because if the pitot tube gets blocked because of ice or some other reason, most of the time the drain hole will not be blocked because it's back here at the back. And if this happens, the airspeed indicator will compare the air pressure from the static port with the air pressure back here at this tiny little drain hole. And there isn't going to be much of a difference because it's no longer getting any kind of ram air. So in this case, your airspeed indicator is going to go down to zero. In fact, it could go down to a negative number because this drain hole might actually cause some suction because of where it's located. Once again, this is most likely what's going to happen. But this drain hole could also get clogged in really bad icing conditions. If this were to happen, the pressure that the airspeed indicator was sensing right before the pitot tube was frozen over would be trapped in here in this pitot line because the drain hole is now blocked too. But the static port continues to supply a lower air pressure over to the airspeed indicator. Because of this, in level flight, your airspeed indicator will be stuck at its current airspeed unless you climb or descend. If you climb or descend, the airspeed indicator will show you that you're speeding up when you climb because the air pressure is decreased back here at the static port. And it would show you that you're slowing down when you descend because the air pressure increases. I like to tell people that the airspeed indicator basically just turns into an altimeter in this situation. And this is where a smart person would be like, golly, if only we had something to melt that ice off. Yep, that's what the pitot heat is for, and hopefully as a private pilot, you never had to use the pitot heat prior to this point. But now that you're getting your instrument rating, it's a lot more likely for you to run into an issue where your pitot tube gets clogged, unless you're that guy who accidentally leaves the pitot tube cover on and then goes flying. 
And I know we're all joking about this, but people have done this and then they died because they didn't understand these pedostatic errors that we're talking about today. And by the way, you still shouldn't be flying in icing conditions with an IFR rating. But sometimes icing conditions can just pop out of nowhere. Okay, so if the pitot tube gets clogged, the airspeed indicator goes down to zero if the drain hole is clear. If both are clogged, then the airspeed indicator turns into an altimeter. But what happens if the static port gets clogged? Pucker factor. If the static port gets clogged or covered in ice, it will affect all of these instruments, which can be quite concerning if you're flying in the weather. If the static port gets clogged, what do you think will happen to the vertical speed indicator? Well, if the static port cannot bring air into the diaphragm, it won't be able to test the rate that the pressure is changing. Because of this, a clogged static port will cause the VSI to read zero, and it's just going to sit there and make it look like you can actually hold your altitude for once. I mean, come on now. <laughs> that should be a hint and a half for you. So if the VSI is stuck in the zero position and you're climbing or descending, this is a pretty good indication that the static port is blocked. What about the altimeter? What do you think this guy will do? Yep, the altimeter is going to be stuck too. And it's going to keep the same pressure it had before you started to climb or descent. And once again, if this guy stops moving, your spidey senses should start tingling especially if you're climbing or descending. Or if you're that guy who can't hold his altitude, your spidey senses should tingle if all of a sudden it tells you you are. But I digress. Now, the airspeed indicator is just going to be a little bit off. Actually, it can be a lot off if you climb and descend very much from the altitude where the static port became blocked. So it's important for you to recognize these errors as quickly as possible so you can fix the problem. And yes, in most cases, you can actually get your instruments back if you run into an issue like this, which can be a huge relief if you're flying in the weather. So if your altimeter appears to be stuck and the VSI is frozen and won't move up or down, there's a good chance that the static port is clogged. And if this happens, your airspeed indicator might move up and down, but it won't be very accurate. Now, a good IFR aircraft is going to have an alternate static source that can be selected anytime you suspect that the primary static port is clogged. These alternate static sources are typically placed inside of the cockpit to protect them from icing conditions. But there's one problem with this design. When air flows around the cabin, it creates a slight suction which actually decreases the air pressure in the cabin. This means that if you need to use the alternate static source, the instruments are going to be a little bit off and it's important to know what they're going to read. Once again, the air pressure inside of the cabin is slightly low because of the suction from the relative wind moving around the cabin. Because of this, the altimeter is going to read slightly high because it's sensing that the air pressure is slightly lower. The VSI is going to indicate an initial climb at first, but then it'll go back down to zero. This is because the VSI measures change. Once the change has happened, it goes back to zero. Once again, the airspeed indicator measures the difference between the ram air and the ambient pressure. If there's less air pressure at the static port, the difference will be greater, so your airspeed will actually read higher than it actually is anytime you use the alternate static system. The interesting thing about this is that when you test the alternate static port on the ground, any wind moving over the airplane can still create some suction in the cabin. And that's why you can see the VSI jump when you test it on the ground. But the altimeter and the airspeed indicator are a little less sensitive. But anyway, this is something you'll want to remember because the instruments will read in a more dangerous direction anytime you use the alternate static. For example, if you need to use the alternate static port, the altimeter will read slightly high, which means you're lower than you think you are. Your airspeed indicator will also be slightly high, which means you're slower than you think you are. And the VSI will just jump up for a second and then go back down to zero. Now, most newer aircraft are going to have an alternate static port, especially if it's an IFR aircraft. But if it doesn't, you can also just break the glass on one of these instruments if you know that the static port is clogged and you don't have an alternate static. Or maybe you do and that's clogged too. I personally would pick the VSI, but that's just me. And just like the alternate static, this will cause the instruments to read in the dangerous direction because they're getting the air pressure from the inside of the cockpit. But it's better than nothing if you're looking at a bunch of clouds in mountainous terrain if your instruments don't work. And that is the real pucker factor.
Hey, thanks for joining me today on Free Pilot Training. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to unpucker and hit that like button for me. And also, if you're enjoying this series, be sure to check out freepilottraining.net to support the channel and get cool gear like this hat right here. Thanks for watching. See ya!